everybody. Well, as an immigration lawyer, our next guest helps prospective Canadians write and present their life stories to government officials. And now she's turning that storytelling inwards by sharing her own mother's immigration experience. Her incredible story is depicted in her debut novel, The Loyal Daughter. We're excited to welcome author Nancy Lamb to the show. Great to have you here, Nancy. Well, Nancy, uh, this is a fictionalized memoir, but it's based on your mother's um, experience immigrating here to Canada. Um, can you tell us a, a very quickly what that experience was like for her? When she was in her 20s, my, it was arranged by family members that she leave her entire family in Hong Kong and China to come to Canada and marry a man she had only ever seen in photographs. 17 days after she arrived, she did that. She, and she didn't speak English or French. <laughs> so she raised four kids and also brought her own family, her parents, her grandmother, and her five siblings to Canada. Wow. <laughs> it, you know, as you know, it can be really challenging to immigrate and to have no resources or support language skills, as you just mentioned. Your mother basically left everything, came here with nothing, worked really hard to build a life of her own. Does that mirror some of the stories that you hear about and learn in, in your work as an immigration lawyer? Yeah, absolutely. A lot of the people that I help do come here without any family and any resources. They don't know the language, so it's very much a struggle for them, like it was for my mom. I mean, there's a lot more now than there was back in the 60s, but access, accessing them is difficult sometimes. And people are shy about it because they don't trust everything. They'd rather hear it from a friend or a family member, which yeah. isn't always available. Yeah. And I think that's the, the next question is the logistics mm -hmm. of moving to a new country, finding a job, housing, community. But there's also an emotional side to immigration and, um, you know, picking up and leaving and starting a new life in a new country. Did your mother ever share the emotional toll that this move took on her? Now, I don't know if Lainey can sort of relate to this, but no. <laughs> Speaking about emotions and feelings is not done in family, in Chinese families usually, from what I understand <laughs> and from my own experience. Um, there were times when there were heated moments when she might have a doubt or a thought as to, I wonder what it would have been like if I could have made it if I stayed. Would it, you know, just that road not taken sort of thing. But for the most part, no, they didn't talk about it. Whereas my, with my clients, absolutely, I, I draw those emotions out on purpose because I want to use that to write their stories so that the people hearing the stories will feel what they feel, will mm. truly understand it. Mm. The book is told from the perspective of multiple generations, and in doing so, we really get to explore the intersection between immigration and identity. And at one point, um, a character in the book is told by their father that they've become, quote, too Canadian, which is based, I believe, on something that you experienced in your family, something that what you uh, were told, an exchange that happened in your own life. So. Why did you want to include that anecdote in the book? Well, first of all, it's true. I've been told many times I'm too Canadian. Mm -hmm. And not in a mean way or anything, but just, oh, too bad, you're too Canadian. Yeah. <laughs> because you share too much emotions. You're, you wear your heart on your sleeve sort of thing. Um, I wanted to share it because, similar to what you and Madeline were talking about earlier, I think it's okay sometimes to reach out and get some help and to talk about things that might be stressing you out, whereas that was never done before and that shouldn't have been done back in the day when I was growing up. The book is told exclusively from the perspective of women. Mm -hmm. So it's a mother, it's a daughter, and it's a granddaughter. Yeah. Why did you choose to write that way? <sighs> My mom <laughs> set a really strong example for me. Her line to me was, you, if I spoke English and I was born in Canada, I wouldn't just be a lawyer, I'd be running this country. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I felt you it. Don't, you don't know how that hit me. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, that, despite all the difficulties and challenges a lot of women face these days that we're seeing in other countries, um, I've always grown up thinking, okay, I should be able to do absolutely anything because look what she did and look what she's sort of instilled in me. 
right? This, this strength, this very quiet strength that is probably even stronger than the outward titles and strength that some men hold. And so do what you can, do whatever you need to get what you need out of this life. As an immigration lawyer, you spend a lot of time hearing stories from people who are seeking citizenship in this country. Why is it important for all of us to know these stories more? Well, similar to what Omar was sharing with his mother, right? These stories are so important. They make Canada. We're all a country of immigrants, and I think it's often lost, or it's not told enough, as we were talking about earlier. And to understand our different cultures makes us stronger as a country, as Canada should be. And I think that's the perfect place to end. Uh, absolutely fascinating discussion. Nancy, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. You can find it everywhere now. And for the lucky members of our studio audience today, you're going home with your own copy. That's it. We'll be right back, everybody. We'll be right back. Hey there. Wasn't that great? Do you know where you can find some equally good content? Our YouTube page. It's filled with discussions, debates, and some laughs. Head there now. Like and subscribe.